All right, so we are in the barn. It's Friday. We just sold a dresser yesterday, and so we need a new dresser for the shop. This one right here on the edge is the prime candidate. I think sometimes it's just best to work on your, your outside and get inside. So we're going to put this in the uh, truck, and then we'll make a plan on how we're going to design it. The fun thing is now you can see the next piece that's in the lineup. This one is pretty, so I am excited to work on that, but you have to do one piece at a time. So this one is first. Zeb is uh, manhandling this dresser himself. Sometimes the question it's is- the easiest way to do it. Can you get it through the door? Let's see, my little fits through here. You guys know I love a good magazine inspiration. This is one of my favorites. Debbie gave it to me for my birthday. And this is my inspiration for my color scheme. This amazing box and the light blue desk. And I think it's going to work out really well. We're winning. We got it. All right. Now let's talk design. This is what I'm thinking, guys. I'm going to prime it all because it's had a hard life. And I don't want any bleed through. And I'm thinking pink on the base of the dresser. And the drawers are going to get decoupage. Let me show you the paper. All right, so here's the paper. This is our cottage floral JRV decoupage paper. And I want to do vintage pink on the base of the dresser, but I think I'm gonna put a little bit of kissing booth so I can get this rose color. So we'll see if we uh, achieve that. But first things first, wash it down, prime it. A lot of people ask me what I like to use to clean. I like to use Citrusol. We actually carry it now because I just love it so much. It's a cleaner and degreaser. And I'm cheap, so I just reuse my misting bottles, and this is how I spray it down. But this is the cleaner that I use inside of it. I can put the link in the description box for you guys if you're interested. The nice thing is that this one container makes like 44 gallons of cleaner, so it goes a long way. So we have a little piece of loose veneer. We're not going to replace this, but we are going to glue down the loose part. So we're just using wood glue and a clamp. We'll wipe off the excess paint and then Zeb's just, or paint, <laughs> glue. And then Zeb's going to clamp it. While that's setting up, we will go ahead and get started um, cleaning the drawers and priming the rest of the piece except for just that area. And then by the time we get to that, that should be dry. See why I like to reuse this bottle? I'm sure you could just buy like a misting bottle, but... It works pretty well. We had it hanging around, so it works really good. This isn't super greasy, just mostly dusty, so... It looks like it's had something stuck on here. Maybe this is old stain that just hasn't come off yet. Well, there's a few spots that I'm going to let soak for a little bit. Like, what is that? Some water spots. Yeah. Priming is really going to do a lot for this piece. All right, so I'm going to be using DIY Salvation Solution. The nice part about this is it is a primer, but I'm using the white. So it's also going to work under my decoupage paper and I won't have to use paint separately. So it's kind of like a little hack and it will block stains and all kinds of things, which is nice. Sometimes on these older pieces, they have wood tannins that'll come through and they'll even come through your paper. So the adhesion always surprises me, like how well it sticks to just this, about anything. It's so good. It is the hands down the best water based stain blocking primer I have ever used. It washes out nicely, it's safe to use indoors, and it goes on really easy. All right, it's now Zeb's turn. So we got the clamps off of this, just some tight bond two wood glue for about 45 minutes, an hour, and just some real simple sanding here. I only want to round the corner. I don't want it to be sharp, and that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to flatten this out or shape it or anything, just smooth it out a little bit. I think this dresser is gonna be pretty, I'm excited. So now that we've got all the glue and the scraping and everything off of the top of this, it needs a complete new finish. We're gonna put this salvation solution on here to stain block because we're worried some of these water spots and maybe old stain, not sure what that was. There was some goopy stuff over here. Uh, we're gonna hopefully block that out with the salvation solution. Might take two coats because there's some heavy duty stains on here, but I don't think so. I think it should be fine with just one. Well, and the we're going to be using Cottage Color. That has a built-in sealer with it. And not that that's a stain blocker by any means, but it does help a little bit because the sealer blocks any other stains that might come through. All right, we've got the Cottage Floral in one of our JRV papers. 
and it's 30 inches wide, but it's a little narrow for this drawer. So we're gonna have to cut it. I'm gonna go ahead and put some liquid patina on here. It's our favorite decoupage medium and give it a pretty healthy coating right over the top of this uh, salvation solution. The white base is gonna brighten up that paper real nice. Just had the paper laying on here and creased it along the edge. That way it makes it really easy for me to kind of come up to that crease. And then we're gonna plop it there. So it's just gonna flatten it out and then we'll put some liquid patina over the top. I am I'm gonna get some wrinkles cause I had to drag it a little bit, but we'll smooth that out with the liquid patina on the top. And then if it's real bad and more than we want, you can always come back through with some parchment paper over the top and iron it and that really flattens it down and adheres it hard because it's gonna heat that sealer up and even bond it better. Sometimes it'd be difficult to line up, so I've got this wet edge that I'm just gonna pull down and that's gonna rip real nice. And then we can come back later and sand anything that's not adhered down well. All right, so Zeb's already kind of laid this out and he's matched this up. You want to slightly overlap your decoupage because you don't want a weird gap if it shrinks. Right, Zeb? Yep, so I'm just using the scrap ends from two pieces of paper, and I actually still have a bunch left over that we'll be able to use on smaller projects. So just lining this up, just a hair over. We'll distress it some. You, Oops, I'm the high. Did you do this backwards? Or nope, I was, I was say... high. I was high. <laughs> there we go. Now those flowers are nice and lined up. We will distress it, though, so that that won't be as obvious on that transition. Also, the knob's gonna go right there, so that's why I lined this up the way I did. So we're going to be using vintage pink, but I want it to be a little bit more rosy. You'll notice it looks a little separated. That's just because it has a built-in sealer. So I'm gonna get all of this vintage pink out, and then I'm gonna mix in a little bit of Kissing Booth. I don't wanna use a ton of Kissing Booth, so I'm just gonna add a little bit because this does not have a built-in sealer. I don't wanna change the properties of the paint. I'm just looking to make it a little bit more rosy. So a little bit goes a long way. And if I mix it up and I feel like it needs a little more, I can always add a little more. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit more this time. Get a little more aggressive with a kissing booth. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. So be careful. See how much darker that got with twice as much being added? So here is the original vintage pink, and here it is with probably a tablespoon and a half of Kissing Booth. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this pink on here. You can see there is still some bleed through showing through the white, but I put enough primer on, it shouldn't come through. It's more just stained it and it's locked in now. It locked in the stain, yes. So we did two coats on the whole piece. I do recommend letting the primer dry overnight. The paint goes on much smoother. Um, but I'm gonna do a third coat just on the top because if I was doing a regular sealer, I would do at least three coats. So I want extra protection where it's gonna get the most abuse. All right, so we're just gonna sand it and give it kind of an aged wallpaper look. And then we'll put one more coat of sealer over the top. Okay, so you carefully put the screw from behind because the paper was still intact and we're screwing on the pink knobs. Seb, how do you feel about the, the paint finish so far? I think it would have looked great in Odelia and Eliza's room. I don't know that they'd go for it now, but I actually think it's pretty cool. I think it'd go in our room. How many years did we have a pink floral bedroom? It was a lot of years. <laughs> Just some light little distresses right here along the edge. Probably not even gonna bring much out. Just wanna make it uniform with those drawers that have some distress. And then we're done. All right, Zeb is uh, manhandling this. Do you need my help getting it in the door? No, probably not. I think I can skinny in. All right, there we go. If he can get his arms around it, he can usually lift it. Look, I painted the back, Les. Here the dresser is in the shop. I didn't quite nail the same color scheme 
but I think this works for the style that we have here. We've just got some vintage baby stuff and some really cute little um, plant misters and it's ready to be sold. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, comment below. If you wanna buy the paint products used here today, you can visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.